When I was in third grade or fifth grade, if I did something, I did it as hard as I could. There was no halfway. And for no other reason, just to challenge myself. I began as a leukemia specialist, then I ended up doing HIV research. And then at age of 41, my first wife was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, just out of the blue. I and mean, she literally came home from jogging one day and said she had a pain. And, and that um, you know, killed her five and a half years later. He spent you know, years with Cindy, and you know, I think he tried everything he can to, you know, to help save her, and, and I think that that had a huge, huge impact on him. I and mean, he's already starting to, to drift into the cancer field, but I think that's what still really drives him. And the main cause of cancer is basically mistakes in our code our DNA code. It's a cell that has gone haywire and grows when it shouldn't grow. And this out of control growth then needs to be stopped or else we die because cancer takes over the body just like weeds can take over a field of, of corn. Cancer, because it comes from your own cells, to the immune system looks for all intents and purposes like, like it's our friend. Your whole immune system's got a lot of different parts to it, kind of like an orchestra, different kinds of instruments, but the T cell coordinates it, it's the conductor. T cells are a key part of your immune system, and their job is to find things that shouldn't be there and kill them. And most of the time they do a great job, but sometimes they get a little confused. And so what the car does, it, it tells the T cell exactly what to kill. we can use a memory T cell and basically make it, give it two jobs, a day and a night job. Its day job might be against chicken pox and it will still be a chicken pox T cell, but we can also make it a leukemia killer cell. And all that really means is that we took different parts of immune receptors and put them together. I got my first grants, you know, really to start making CAR T cells for leukemia in 2004. And it took until 2009, until we had all, everything in place, we would get all the permissions required. And then in 2010, our first patients were treated. She was born on May 2nd, 2005. And uh, you know she had a full head of black hair and weighed 10 pounds. And she was perfectly healthy uh, up until just after her fifth birthday. Emily was diagnosed in May 2010, and she had relapsed twice and came to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And she came at a time when we were just opening up the clinical trial in acute lymphoid leukemia. So it was really just in time in her case, and she received some chemotherapy to hold her while we were manufacturing her T cells. I'll never forget that image of Emily sitting on the bed, bald, being infused with the cells, her parents looking on and, and wondering what the future would hold. I picked her up on day one when she was diagnosed and I said, Emily, only the strongest children are picked to fight cancer and you're gonna be a hero because you're gonna beat it no matter what. You know, it was one of these miraculous cases where she had a very severe side effect from the therapy called cytokine release syndrome with fevers high enough that it made her unconscious. She was comatose. She had a 106 degree fever for about three days. We found out later that three, over three and a half pounds of her body weight was cancer. And each one of those modified T cells can kill up to a thousand cancer cells. So they went in there and started killing our cancer and her body became overwhelmed. And she ended up in a coma and on a ventilator for 14 days. The doctors at the pediatric intensive care unit that night told us there was a one in a thousand chance she'd survive the night. So I said, well, I'll see you at rounds tomorrow because she's gonna beat her cancer. Uh, she was in the ICU and intubated and the docs called the family in and said that she wasn't gonna be there in the morning. And here's where serendipity and the genius of Carl Jung comes in. The first 10 years of my life, I worked on autoimmune disease 
My mother had had lupus. Uh, I have two daughters that have autoimmune disease. I myself have that. So I got to know all the new drugs coming out for those uh, hyperactive immune systems. And one of them was called tocilizumab. I knew that maybe we had a way to treat it, and that would be by taking this drug for arthritis and giving it to Emily. She woke up from that coma after they gave her the tocilizumab on her seventh birthday. So she came back to us and opened her eyes and uh, the, the staff sung happy birthday to her and we took her home on June 1st of 2012. Now she's eight years since she spent a night in the hospital. She, she's been cancer free ever since. I've never seen anyone that sick recover. So to go into remission within just 10 to 12 days after therapy was really astonishing. And that's how rapid CAR T cells can work. We were able to show that she had had pounds, literally pounds of cancer, in her bone marrow, in her spleen, and other organs, and it all went away. Once she woke up and started to get better, uh, it was amazing for us, because we asked, can we go see the lab where they grew these cells? And that's the day that we met Dr. Carl June. So, you know, he cried. He's had challenges and disappointment and utter tragedy in his own life. And he's really able to use those experiences to comfort and be with the people that he's trying to treat. I felt like we were meant to meet uh, Dr. Carl June and uh, just uh, feel lucky every day to still call Emily my daughter and have her be here healthy and happy. You know, to see someone get a new life is a rare event and I think they probably live it more uh, wisely because of those lessons. Emily was a turning point in gene therapy. The impact of his work and what's happened in the field has been a revolution in the treatment of cancer, where we have a fourth pillar of medicine. We had surgery, we had chemotherapy, we had radiation, even if you think of some targeted therapy, but this is truly targeted therapy and it's a living drug. It's derived from the patient's own cells. He is relentless, and we have this, we call it RFP, relentless forward progress. <laughs> so like, nothing stands in the way. And if you're at a breaking point, you just keep plowing through. So I think that's a huge strength, you know, just kind of the dedication and the, the powering through the difficult time. He is fanatical. He pushes himself, you know, he's not really competitive with other people, but he's extraordinarily competitive with himself. And I think Carl really understands, you know, his only rule is to cure people from cancer. And anything that gets in the way of that rule isn't really a rule. It's been an honor and a real privilege to be able to be part of this team, to work with Carl for 28 years and to see a transformation in cancer therapy. Every day I walk through the first floor to get to my office and there's a, a, a saying on the cancer center is, we're not declaring victory, we're declaring hope. I think we are getting more hopeful towards getting people cured on a routine basis. And I think hope is something that really is what we need in this world right now. This is our Christmas card, I don't know if you can see that. The Whitehead started a, a foundation, the Emily Whitehead Foundation, and they had what's called the Believe Ball. And these were all the kids that had been on Carl's therapy. He won't stop. Like, he wouldn't stop until I could get every single person in the whole world with cancer on Christmas card and say, now I'm done. Cindy never got to see this. But I think she'd be very proud. I think she's smiling. <laughs> yeah.